Okay. Okay, like I'm crazy. It makes it seem like I'm crazy. Oh, but I am. Okay. You ain't crazy. You're smart. But you should start doing those. You, uh, you should start. That. Okay. You should start okay, doing that. Yes. You should start doing the. Uh, those uh, media analysis. Those are good, man. That's a good learning. Oh, something, thanks. That's something free you can do for the people. Well, Jay was. Uh, I never even looked at that. I was like, yeah, I, you're right. Yeah, because I was so mad at Jay for posting that. For real, you was? I was mad at him because it's the summertime and I don't do no work during the summer. Ah, okay. Except I will write. I'll write, but that's about it. So everybody's like, Dr. Story, can you please do more of these? Okay. You should. Tell them to play with tuition. Okay, so. Yeah, you ain't from Louisville, but you still know the impact of Holly. Yeah. You don't. I think you'll be the only one that's not from Louisville. I mean, oh. interview. <laughs> is Al from Louisville? Yeah, yeah he's I mean, from Louisville. Oh. He moved away and moved to Baltimore. He's from his mom. Oh, okay. It's in the West End. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's he from Louisville. About going to those uh, drags. He just not even lived here as long. Okay. So, just basically, talk just talk Ali. just talk about how the the impact that Ali had uh, in your life as far as like seeing. Let's see what I asked Dr. Hurd. I asked him about the impact of Ali and yeah, uh, while you was when you was growing up, but you're not from that era, but just the impact of Ali. Yeah. And then uh talk about how they pacified him later in his life. Okay. Okay, okay, I'm ready. Oh, okay. do you need me to prompt you or you No, I can I can just talk. Okay. Okay. Go. Uh, Muhammad Ali was important and significant as a public figure and an athlete for several reasons. The first Ali talked about and discussed very adamantly and very boldly and in a very courageous way about how beautiful he was, not only because he was a world champion athlete or a world class athlete, but also because he was African American and he was an African American male at that. Ali was very unapologetic about how not only did he feel that he himself was beautiful, but that black people generally, transnationally, were a beautiful people because of the ways in which we resisted, the ways in which we invented and reinvented culture, um, the ways in which we combated white supremacy. Um, okay. No, keep going. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> he's fine, he's fine, he's going. I was gonna oh. tell him he could have went around this way. Okay. Um, My fault. keep going. No, and so, you know, there hasn't really been, and I said this on uh, Facebook status uh, when I learned of his passing, there hasn't been an athlete um, since Ali or even before Ali to be such a social activist and I mean not only for African Americans but also for Islam um, as we all know Ali had a very close and deep personal friendship with Malcolm X and when he's friends with Malcolm X when he changes his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali I mean this is not only extremely controversial but I mean, folks were looking at Ali like he was un-American, that he was unpatriotic, that him talking about justice and injustice, especially when it came to the lives of black people, that that somehow was antithetical to what America was supposedly standing for, which, as we know now, is not the case. He was not only despised by so many, but hated, reprimanded, um, especially when he refused to go to the Vietnam War. And he has that famous quote, you know, ain't no Viet Cong ever called me, you know, no nigga. And people said, you know, how dare you turn down this American service. And I mean, Ali's point about not participating in a war, Ali was aware that African Americans have participated in every single war in the United States since the first war. Right. And that didn't stop their participation in these wars and them acting patriotic, quote unquote, and standing up and fighting for the country didn't really do anything to impact the social and um, economic and injustice, you know, you know, racist. Uh, hold on, let me reset that. God damn, Doc. Let me say something. No. You are just so intelligent. Oh, no, that's no, why no, I fucking, no, no. That's why no. I fucking got you, man. God oh, damn, no, you, are no. you are killing it, Doc. Like, okay, <laughs> I got no, so much um, I can use from that. Oh, my oh, God. But, like, that's why um, I asked you. But <laughs> just, Okay, but just because African Americans participated in every single war since the first war that we had in the United States didn't change their socioeconomic uh, circumstances, right? We know that folks would come home from the war expecting ever greater freedom, and that was not the case. They uh, were subjected to racism, um, hatred, being spat on, being attacked by dogs, being 
feared and surveyed by the police. So this idea of black people going to war and somehow freeing themselves by performing some patriotic duty, Ali said, you know what, I'm not having it and I'm not doing it. Um, I think that now, you know, since Ali has gotten Parkinson's and since his passing, there's a lot of sanitizing when it comes to his public image about who he was and what he stood for. Um, but those of us who followed Ali, you know, because Ali was, you know, I'm not from Louisville, but my father made it clear uh, who Ali was in my life and who, um, I, that I should look up to him and admire him and, and learn lessons from him. And then also in popular culture. I remember the famous scene from um, Coming to America where they're arguing about whether or not they're going to call him Cassius Clay or Muhammad Ali and his mama named him Clay, I'm going to call him Clay. And, and, and this whole discussion, and even though it's comedic and even though Murphy uh, posits this discussion as a very light and funny thing, this was a real big controversy for many African Americans. Many African Americans despised Ali being a Muslim, just like many African Americans feared Malcolm X um, and his association with the nation. Um, and they do this to a lot of our figures. They did this to King. Um, they've never done this to Malcolm X, surprisingly. They really don't deal with X and they don't attempt to sanitize his image. Um, but they also don't talk about, you know, Malcolm's nuances toward the end of his life and when he went to Mecca and prayed with Muslims of, you know, every race and how he changed his name to El Hajj Malik Shabazz and how he became uh, much more, um, Nuance in his analysis and perspective, I mean, it's the same thing that they do to King. They see King as this kind of passive civil rights leader when in actuality he was, he believed in socialist democracy and he was working on the poor people's campaign and this idea of economic poverty as one of the major dividers in this country, both for white and black folk. Um, but they try to, you know, only pay attention to his I have the dream. And so when it comes to Ali, most people want to just see him as an athlete. And then some want to see him as this great humanitarian, right, toward the end of his life. No one wants to think about Ali and all of the many layers and nuances that he had within him. He was an athlete, he was a social activist, he was Muslim, and he celebrated and boldly lived all those aspects of his life um, until the very end, until Parkinson's took his voice. And I do believe that if Parkinson's had not taken Ali's voice, we would know exactly what he thought, what he felt, um, especially now in this climate of Black Lives Matter and police brutality and state violence. I mean, I, I definitely believe Ali, just like he had been before, he would be very outspoken about the injustices that black people face. So, I mean, he's always been a hero of mine. He's greatly missed and, you know. Mm. That's good, man. Okay. Thank